very warm welcome to you this morning to St Giles Rectory for this Sunday morning Eucharist on the fourth Sunday of Easter. We've now completed three weeks of Easter celebrations and so we're roughly halfway through on our walk with the risen Lord towards Ascension and then Pentecost. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, give us new strength from the courage of Christ our Shepherd, and lead us to join the saints in heaven, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. The merit in the sight of God is in bearing punishment patiently when you're punished after doing your duty. This, in fact, is what you were called to do, because Christ suffered for you and left an example for you to follow the way he took. He had done nothing wrong, and there had been no perjury in his mouth. He was insulted and did not retaliate with insults. When he was tortured, he made no threats, but he put his trust in the righteous judge. He was bearing our faults in his own body on the cross, so that we might die to our faults and live for holiness. Through his wounds, you have been healed. You had gone astray like sheep, but now you have come back to the shepherd and guardian of your soul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my own sheep, and my own know me. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews, I tell you most solemnly, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold through the gate, but gets in some other way, is a thief and a brigand. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the flock. The gatekeeper lets him in. The sheep hear his voice. One by one, he calls his own sheep and leads them out. When he has brought out his flock, 
He goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow, because they know his voice. They never follow a stranger, but run away from him. They do not recognise the voice of strangers. Jesus told them this parable, but they failed to understand what he meant by telling it to them. So Jesus spoke to them again, I tell you most solemnly, I am the gate of the sheepfold. All others who have come are thieves and brigands, but the sheep took no notice of them. I am the gate. Anyone who enters through me will be safe. He will go freely in and out and be sure of finding pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come so that they may have life and may have it to the full. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This Sunday is sometimes called Good Shepherd Sunday and this name is taken from the Gospel reading traditionally used on this Sunday where Jesus speaks of himself as the Good Shepherd. In the Book of Common Prayer it was last Sunday, the third Sunday of Easter, was traditionally known as Good Shepherd Sunday because that was when uh, the readings, those readings were used in the Book of Common Prayer. But this Sunday, or last Sunday, about this time in Eastertide, we reflect on the Good Shepherd. In the Hebrew Scriptures, God is often pictured as the shepherd, and the people as the flock. There's no more popular psalm than the 23rd, The Lord is my shepherd. And in Isaiah it says, he will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and he will carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those that are with young. Now to understand this image of the Good Shepherd, we have to realise that the relationship between sheep and shepherd is quite different in Palestine than it is in our own country. Here we mainly keep sheep for the meat. In Palestine they are primarily for the wool and so the sheep were often with the shepherd for years and he really did get to know them. In fact he gave, give, gave them names based on certain features such as long ears or white nose. The Middle Eastern shepherd's voice is actually today still recognised by his sheep. A traveller tells how he heard the shepherd talking to his sheep in a sing-song type of voice, using a weird, unknown language. And when the shepherd calls, the sheep will indeed recognise his voice and follow him. But if it is a stranger, they will stop short, lift up their heads in alarm, and if repeated, uh, they turn and flee. So the Jewish scriptures teach that God's relationship with his people is like that, a shepherd who knows us individually and to whose voice and his alone we respond. And the message of this morning's gospel is that Jesus too is like that. He too is our shepherd, like God the Father. In our gospel, Jesus talks about the door or the gate of the sheepfold. First he talks about how the true shepherd will uh, go in through the door, through the gate. And then he talks of himself as the gate. Within a few lines, Jesus talks about two different types of sheepfold. In the villages and in the towns, there were communal sheepfolds where all the flocks were sheltered at night. There was a strong door, and only the guardian of the door had the key. And the true shepherd would be the one who goes in that way, and the sheep would follow his voice. A thief 
would get in another way, would climb over the wall. So the true shepherd is known by the way he gets in. And that is how people should recognise Jesus as the true, the good shepherd, we're being told. He doesn't force us like a thief does, he calls us gently. But out on the hills at night, the sheep would be collected into a different type of sheepfold, which was just a wall around an open space, and there was no gate. And the shepherd would himself lie down at the opening, and he would be the gate. And that is what Jesus is, the door through which we come in safely and go out to pasture, the door by which we come to God. All this rings true for me personally, because as very many of you will know, for many years I kept geese, and even at a distance they would recognise my footsteps. And I remember coming home last summer when Gregory, the last of my geese, was getting ill and was uh, shortly to die, and I called out to him from my back door when he was locked away in his shed. And he immediately responded, rewarded me by loud honks. Then earlier on, many years ago, one of the little goslings, called April, wasn't accepted by the others, and I looked after her and took her into my study. And then, uh, because she wasn't accepted by the rest of the flock, I gave her to some friends in the parish that I was in at the moment, at that time, in Creswell, because they had two genders who needed a female companion. But whenever after that I would visit April, she always recognised me and would feed from my hands. Our relationship with our animals is very close, and it gives a hint of our Lord's relationship with us. That is what our Gospel reading is saying. But of course, it is only a hint. Uh, if our relationship with our animals is wonderful, so much more is our, is our Lord's relationship with us. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. We pray for the Church, the people of God throughout the world, for the gift of Christian hope, joy and confidence in this Easter season, 
the Libby, our bishop, and the clergy and congregations of our diocese. For Elizabeth, our Queen, and for her government. For all working to limit the spread of infection at this time. And also for areas of the world where there is conflict, Iraq, Yemen, Syria, and areas of the world suffering from starvation, Afghanistan, Congo, South Sudan. We pray for the sick, for all suffering under pre the present infection, especially we remember also those suffering from economic hardship at this time, the unemployed, those threatened with redundancies, those whose businesses are ceasing to be liable. We pray also for those we know who are sick, for Carol Sanderson and Matthew Link, for the recently departed Derek Holmes and Rosina Newton, and for those whose years mind fall at this time, Janet Pollard, Doris Turner, Emma Armshaw, and Alice Borgie. Merciful Father, accepts these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, restore us by these Easter mysteries. May the continuing work of our Redeemer bring us eternal joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God for it is right to give thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we praise you with greater joy than ever in this Easter season, when Christ became our Paschal sacrifice. He is still our priest, our advocate who always pleads our cause. Christ is the victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. The joy of the resurrection renews the whole world while the choirs of heaven sing forever to your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was, was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. 
he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once of the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, bringing before you this bread and this cup, we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Blessed Mary, the holy apostles, evangelists and martyrs, St Giles, St John the Baptist, St Roche and all the saints, may praise and glorify you for ever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Father, eternal shepherd, watch over the flock redeemed by the blood of Christ and lead us to the promised land. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. 